there's a history of scientific investigation of ayahuasca specifically, which started really about 150 years ago, the first time that Richard Spruce, the 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 famous English botanist, collected uh, ayahuasca uh, among a couple of different tribes. That was around 1858. And if you wanted to put a marker down, when did the scientific investigation of ayahuasca begin, or when did it come known to science, then then that would be it. And, and then there was a subsequent, you know, various investigators and uh, both uh, chemists and pharmacologists and botanists over the next century and a half. Uh, and interestingly, a lot of that work, uh, in some ways, uh, Richard Spruce was uh, ahead of his time in the sense that he actually collected material for chemical analysis. And uh, that was not something that people did. All the subsequent investigators for probably the next four or five decades, they, they reported on the chemistry of the plants and, and, and so on. And, uh, you know, the constituents of ayahuasca became kind of legendary. They, they kept rediscovering the same molecule out of the plant, which was basically harming. But they gave it different names, telepathy and benisterine and, and things like that. And it was really the same molecule. The, the, and it was not in the mindset of chemists or pharmacologists to collect voucher specimens. So a lot of this early botanical work, in some ways, was a waste of time because you couldn't reference it to an actual collection. You know, I mean, the work was good. But eventually, uh, you know, people did kind of caught on to the importance of having collections, and then some of the subsequent work on the chemistry, you know, had more validity because you could trace it to actual specimens. But it was really uh, Richard Schultes, you know, if anybody deserves the credit, I mean, Richard Spruce deserves the credit for kind of bringing it into the purview of modern science, but it was Richard Schultes who, uh, with all of these South American uh, psychedelics or hallucinogens that that we know of, he is really was the world's expert on that, and he was the director of the Botanical Museum at Harvard University, and uh, but spent fourteen years continuously in the Amazon collecting many kinds of plants, not just psychoactive plants, but psychoactive plants were a, uh, you know, a focus of his work for sure. So he discovered, you know, that the, and, and being a botanist, he could approach this systematically. He discovered the species involved in the preparation of ayahuasca. He discovered the, these varolas, which are the sources of the snuffs and the Amazon and, and also other kinds of snuffs. So really Schultes deserves a lot of credit as the person to really sort of systematically, you know, focus the lens of science on this topic. And he, uh, conveniently enough, you know, he was the director of the Harvard Botanical Museum. So he had a printing press in his basement. He didn't have to worry about peer review and all that stuff. He could just write papers and publish them, you know, which he did quite quite prolifically. And and those papers, of course, became the inspiration for a new generation, you know, of people like myself who grew up in the sixties and. Uh, and were influenced by, you know, the, the, the emergence of psychedelics uh, uh, at that time. And, and we're certainly inspired by Schultes. I mean, I know I was, and many people who, who pursued a career in ethnopharmacology were, you know, they wanted to be like Schultes or study with Schultes or whatever. And I, I was the same. I, I had made a pilgrimage to Harvard in 1974 to meet the man, and uh, he was very encouraging. Uh, uh, but he didn't get me into Harvard. <laughs> you know, uh, he he wanted to accept me, but uh, he said, "You know, you, you need to go back." I'd already got my undergraduate degree. He, 
And he said, you need to go back and study more chemistry and more taxonomy. So I went back to Colorado and I enrolled in courses for that. And, uh, and that still didn't get me into Harvard. And actually by that time it was okay because while I was in the process of getting the, the, that background that, that, he had, that he had urged me to get, I also was playing around with uh, cultures of uh, Celestia cubensis and and figuring out how to grow those things. Uh, you know, as it happened, I, I did my I, I did this sort of post graduation you know follow up with these courses at Colorado State University, and uh, my originally my BA degree was from Colorado University, but I went to Colorado State University. And uh, as it happened, my best friend from high school was a horticulturalist who was in charge of the greenhouse at uh, Colorado State University. <laughs> by, the, by the time I got there, I had access to the tissue culture lab uh, and, and all the equipment needed to do fungal culture. So I had, I had the run of the lab and autoclaves and the fume hoods and all that. So very easy for me or anyway i had all the tools i needed to figure out how to grow the mushrooms 